Welcome to Chemistry 101. Um, in this class, one of the things that we're going to be exploring and dealing with is different concepts that are um, centered around chemistry. Uh, in particular, we want to make a connection between the chemistry material and those things that are found in um, the health profession. So, um, one again, I want to welcome you to the class. What I want to do right now is I want to give you a brief tour of the things, how to navigate through the website uh, or through the page. So you've gotten this far, so you know how to log in and you know um, your password and your passcodes and things of that nature. So when you first come onto the website, the first thing you're going to see is this announcement banner. In the announcement banner, we have like your welcome. In this area of the announcement banner, we normally have um, we, we provide the announcements concerning what's happening in the class, important due dates, things that are happening that you need to be aware of. This is the area where I would normally communicate with you. If I send out something, this will go out to the entire class, and also you'll see it on the announcements, and then you will see it on the um, in your emails as well so as you go down on the left hand side these are your menus so if you click on course information the first thing you're going to see is your syllabus so I want you to print out your syllabus and read it and make sure that you are up on what the important dates are we have some rules about the discussion board, things that you can and cannot do. We have the discussion board rubrics. This is a really, really important part of the class. I believe the rubric um, weighs, uh, I think it's 15% of your overall grade. Um, but you want to pay attention to uh, responding to the rubric. You're going to respond to the rubric. I mean, you're going to respond to the discussion board prompt every week. So this is important for you to know and to make sure that you know what I'm looking for as you respond to the discussion board. Most students lose um, uh, points because of the participation. They generally don't provide three or more um, posts to other students stuff. So this is a real important area that you should pay attention to. And then with this, um, also I have what's in here is called our policy submission. In this class, I do not penalize, well, I do penalize you for submitting late, late work. However, you can submit late work up to four weeks in this class. The lowest grade that you'll end up receiving would normally be a 55 for an assignment. And with that assignment, um, you know, if you don't get it in week one, then you have week two to get the assignment in. But the thing that you would know is that you will be penalized a letter grade. So that penalization, if you would normally got 100 on that particular assignment, the following week, because it's submitted late, you would only got a 90. If it's submitted the week after that, you would have got an 80. If it's submitted a week later than that, the highest grade you're going to be able to get would be a 70. So generally after the fourth week, then I don't allow late submissions at all. So just please get your stuff in on time so that you don't really even have to worry about uh, not getting the maximum credit. All right, the other thing here we have on our left-hand tab is information about the professor. You can go down that, see what's going on there. Um, here. You have information about me, my phone number. This number you can use. You can call me directly on this number. It's my Google Voice number, um, and I will pick up. If you email me, I generally hook. I generally will respond to your email within four to six hours, um, because I have it attached to my phone. I can get it pretty quickly, so I'll make sure that you get the information that you need, so that you can. Um, be successful in the class. All right, the heart of this class is centered around weekly materials, and I'm going to change this to the view 
that you're going to see as a student. Um, each week you have a weekly assignment. So the first week we're looking at scientific notation. So within scientific notation, I have generally your to-do list. So you have panels that are set up. So this is your to-do list. It tells you what the things you need to do before you, uh, what you need to do for that week. Over here is a little arrow that you would point. So this particular thing has 10 panels. You would select the panel and here you have a video to watch on significant figures. So you click on that, watch the video on significant figures. Click on the next panel here. You have another video to watch on scientific notation. Now these videos aren't large, they aren't big. Um, they're probably maybe 10 to 15 minutes depending on what it is. One of the main things I want you to get out of this is being able to walk away with a concept in hand like okay I can do scientific notation I can do significant figures then after that you will have your summary the summary is important you're going to submit a summary every week on every concept so you submit the summary for that particular material now this lesson isn't that hard or complicated but what I've tried to do with this summary just give you prompts on things that you should include in your summaries. So make sure you talk about scientific notation in terms of identifying it in terms of this particular example. Um, I generally want to see a full paper. I mean, meaning you're going to probably have maybe a, a good paper will probably be a page and a half, two pages. Um, but regardless of how you decide you want to do it, it needs to be complete in terms of addressing uh, that particular uh, lesson. So I don't want you to just answer the questions that are associated with that particular lesson. You go to your next panel. Um, then you have your quiz, which I don't want you to go to the quiz. I'm just going to cancel that out. You have a pre-quiz. The pre-quiz just allows you to um, get an idea of what type of stuff you're going to get on the uh, quiz. Um, my suggestion here for the pre-quiz is that when you take it, and it's launching, it just want, don't wants me to do it. You can look at the pre-quiz. You can set it up, and as a way, as a, as a time saver, what you can do is because I allow you to see the answers as well. You can go to save and submit, and what it does is it shows you the right answers that are associated with that particular quiz. So you can actually go back and figure out what it is that you did wrong or you didn't do wrong or figure out how that answer was obtained as a time saving measure. Uh, after you have your uh, pre-quiz, you will then normally be given a actually quiz on the material as well. So this here is a pre-quiz for the scientific notation, which is the same thing. After you've taken the quiz, you can then um, you will then be giving your pre-quiz, which just shows you the types of questions that you should be aware of for that particular subject. And then after that, you're going to have a quiz. The quiz is the thing that counts. So once you do the pre-quiz and you're pretty solid on the pre-quiz, you would then take your quiz. The quiz is the thing that you're going to be given a grade in. So this is an example of, I got to go back and change some of this I see because it shouldn't be pre-quiz twice, um, that you're going to get a test on. So when you once you take this test, this gets into your grade center. But if you've done your pre-quizzes, you should be fine and you shouldn't have to worry about um, the grade. So the pre-quiz is there so that you can see what's happening 
um, to get an idea of what's going on and then from there you can uh, take your quiz so the way that this is set up is that um, you really should be successful in terms of doing this you really should not have any issues in terms of the material and the way that this that the way that it's set up so um, each one of these here now let me go back to my view of teachers view so I can just give you a quick overview so here you have your scientific notation pre-quiz you have your significant negative significant figures quiz then you have your quiz on significant figures then you have your quiz on um, scientific notation scientific notation quiz and then your significant figures quiz and then after that you're going to have your discussion board so which is your week's discussion board so in that you're going to go and post on the discussion board whatever the week's discussion or week's topics is going to be so in each weekly assignment you're going to have that same type of format I'm going to show it to you here week two dealing with atoms and ions again again you have your to-do list you're going to have your video to watch you're going to have your atomic structure a video to watch you're going to have your summary that you're going to submit you're going to have your pretest on the um, conversions you have a pretest on atomic structure you'll have a quiz on conversions and then you'll have a quiz on atomic structures so each of these are probably about 10 minutes 10 questions in each one and then after that you will have your discussion board which you will go and talk to um, go and post on the discussion board keep in mind that um, my suggestion is that when you start working on this once this is open up to you you start looking at it from the beginning of the week so if it's open up on a Sunday which is normally when it will be open on a Sunday you will look at the material just get a brief overview of the material start getting your reading organized by Wednesday you want to make um, you want to would have want to made some leeway into what you're doing so I would start writing my summaries start getting that material together and then say by Friday have everything complete um, this is just a suggestion what I found out is that most students will try to wait until the last day and they'll try to bounce and try to do all the stuff at the last minute for this particular class, that is not a good formula. Um, maybe you could have done that in the past with some of your other classes, but with this class, you really need to be systematic and do the work in a timely fashion. If you mess around and wait to the last minute, it's going to really, really become overwhelming. So, And because the class is so intense in terms of what you have to do, um, you need to have that material done in a timely fashion so time management is important in terms of um, dealing with this class so um, so the weekly assignments again on the left hand side panel is the most important is, is really where center all the activity goes in discussion boards there's a link from the discussion boards that go into um, to the discussion board so every week you're going to have a different discussion board something that you're going to talk about so for this first week you're only dealing with your icebreaker you're going to tell the class about yourself you're going to tell them something that's important or two false things about yourself and one thing that's true and the class is going to try to guess which one is true which one is not um, every week we'll have something that we're dealing with that's going to actually end up relating to the lesson so for example here if we look at our week four discussion board it says um 
Recent studies have shown that excess sodium is not the sole consideration in the control of blood pressure. More important is the sodium ion potassium ratio. That ratio should be about 0.6. In other words, our diet should contain about 67% more potassium than sodium. Young men, young American males 25 to 30 years old consume a diet of sodium potassium is 1.07 and a diet of females the range of sodium potassium ratio is 1.04. Does someone in your family have hypertension? Because of most Americans have high blood pressure, are you doing anything to prevent this condition? So here's something that's kind of like a personal question where you can chime in and talk about the relationship that's associated with um, high blood pressure. So every week we'll have something, and it's related to what we've done in class. So this week we dealt with um, naming compounds, atoms, and as a result of that, we're going to have something that's showing a connection between this particular subject, chemistry, and how it's involved in the, the medical field. So that's under discussion board. Labs, this is here so that you can see what labs you need to do. So we have our introduction, which deals with safety and knowing the um, equipment that's associated with the lab. And lab one, you have a PDF file here that shows you the instructions that you need to do in the lab. Now these labs are virtual labs. Because they're virtual labs, you just need to, um, well this particular lab is a paper lab. Lab one is a paper lab. So you'll print the lab out, you'll write uh, the lab, and then you'll upload it with your measurements link. So you'll upload it and then it'll be graded from there. Um, however, lab two and three are virtual labs meaning that they're done on a computer and you click on the link this is the link for the virtual lab this is the directions for that particular lab and then you have your submission link for that particular lab so in the syllabus you're going to give out what you're going to submit this scan and upload it into this submission using the submission link the same thing you're going to have with Lab 3, this is a virtual lab as well. You have your directions for the lab, and then you have your link, and then you're going to have a submission button here for that particular lab. So there's a lot of things that's packed into this class, so it's really important that you get a jump start on the material, become familiar with everything that you need to do. One of the nice little features that's built into this class is that you have a My Grades button, which I don't have access to, but it allows you to see all of your grades instantaneously. Once I've graded it, you can go to My Grades and see exactly um, where you stand grade-wise in the class. That grade will mirror the grade that you will be actually getting in the class. So. I know I've said a mouthful, there's a lot of information that's packed into this video. Um, go back and read it again or listen to it again if you didn't quite get everything. Um, that's the great thing about having videos, you can go back and listen to it again. Um, and again, I welcome you to the class. If there's any questions, you have any problems, anything that's going on, let me know so that I can deal with it immediately. Don't allow whatever issues you might be facing with to fester and it gets to the point where it's irreconcilable. Can't do anything about it. Can't change it. I can't do it. I can't intervene if I'm not aware of it. So, um, have a great rest of the day, and I look forward to working with you during the semester.